Welcome to Word 2010 Mail Merge. I'm Trainer Lori. What is Mail Merge? Well, you can keep your names and addresses or uh, other kinds of data in Access or Excel or Outlook. In other words, have a database and then merge it with the letters or emails. You can find it all on your Mailings tab. And if it's grayed out, don't worry, uh, we'll show you how to make all those tools appear. You choose what you want to start with, but here's a tip. Some people are familiar with the old style mail merge wizard, and if you prefer that, you do have that option. And you can see that over here on the right. But um, that's old school, so uh, we won't show you that today, but you can use that if you need to. Also, I want to show you before we get into the actual mail merge, how to create one envelope or one label. Uh, for example, I just need to send one uh, letter, and so I can create an envelope just for that. I would type in the delivery address, and if you prefer you can have your uh, return address printed right on there as well. And if you choose a label, you can choose if you want a full page of the same label. For example, maybe you want one that has your uh, return address on it or um, to say fragile or something like that, that you would have a full page of the same label. Otherwise, you would choose which label it's going to be. And if it's not the, uh, if the label that you want to use isn't here, just simply click on the, the label and you will see other options. All right, now let's get back to our real mail merge. Uh, first, you'll want to start with a letter or uh, uh, something open. It can, it can turn into an email or, or something else. But uh, go ahead and open up whatever it is that you want to start with and then start your mail merge. And here's a tip. Always just move to the right. And if you don't need some of the options, skip them, but just move from the left to the right. And that way you, you don't actually have to use the uh, wizard. You can do letters email messages, envelopes, labels, a directory, and then again your um, mail merge wizard is at the bottom. I'm going to show you every tool that's available to us here. Now if you do email messages it will show as an HTML file or XML file. If you uh, choose your envelope options it looks just like before with creating one individual envelope. And you also get instructions on how to put it into your printer, which is very useful. I've ruined many an envelope and not uh, looking at these instructions. You can type a new list. In fact, there's three different ways to select your recipients, but we're going to look at each of them. The first is type a new list. When you do that, it actually creates an access database. It doesn't look like access, but it's a nice form, user uh, friendly form. You simply type in your address, your, uh, and the fields are already determined for you. However, if you want to change your fields, you can. So you uh, simply uh, add them or rename them here. And then you can save it, and when you save it, notice it saves it as an access database. When you go to open it again, uh, the document, the Word document that is linked to this database, it'll say that it will run some SQL, and that's okay. That's exactly what you want, so the answer would be yes. If you already have a database, you can use that. It can be from Access, it can be from Excel, it can even be from Outlook, and we'll look at that one in just a minute. So you just have to go in and find it, and once you find your uh, source, then uh, you can simply link it. If it is an Access database, it will have multiple tables, and it'll need to know which table do you want to link. If you're using Outlook, then it will ask which contacts, because you'll probably have uh, lots of them. So uh, choose the one that is appropriate, remembering that suggested contacts are generally not um, saved. So uh, if you have a whole bunch of suggested contacts, you'll want to save those so that they're permanent, and you can use it over and over again. Once you've selected your recipients, then the Edit Recipient List shows. And uh, you can come in and say, well, I want these, I want these, but I don't want these. So you can choose who you want in your, in your list to actually send the, uh, or merge the, the data with, which is pretty cool that you can actually go in there and make changes to it like this. And there's all kinds of other options. You can sort, filter, find duplicates, find specific people, and you, to make sure that the addresses are complete. Once you've chosen uh, what you're going to merge with who you're going to merge it with, all the other tools become available. And uh, so at this point, you're ready to do whatever you want to do with it. If, if you're done, you can simply say finish and merge. But if you would like to make some more changes, you can uh, look at all the options. So we'll look at all the options. 
you might want to highlight the merge fields so that you can see them because sometimes it's hard to see the, the code in amongst a long letter. So you, uh, if you click this, then it, it highlights them. You can see it, it puts this gray screen behind it. If there are problems, you can choose to correct the problems here and make sure that they match the fields. The greeting line is part of that address block. It's the same concept, but it, it, uh, you get to choose your salutation. And if you don't have a recipient name, what would it would show? And then you could actually go through and see what it looks like. If you want to add a field that isn't already in there, then you can insert it. So mine is a little bit different. I have address, date, code, and dollar, so I can choose what to put in. This is particularly useful. If you have a long list and some might fit a certain criteria and others, for example, uh, if they're in the state of Florida and we're inviting them to come to Florida, all we have to, we can change it to say we're so glad you're in our state if you're in Florida. But if they don't say Florida in the address line, then we would say we would love to have you visit our state. This is what the match fields looks like. Uh, so uh, if this is what the one is built in, and then you can look over here at yours and say, okay, it's first name in theirs, but it's called first name no space in mine, and it'll try to match them, and it's pretty good about matching them, but if some of them don't seem to match uh, appropriately, you can come in here and choose. If you are using just labels, it will say uh, you can update the labels, and essentially you're done. Uh, you can come in into the invalid merge field and either remove it or you can say well it's really supposed to be something else so you can fix it at any point before you actually print when it's valid it will show it this way and so you can see because I use the highlight merge fields they're still highlighted here as well sometimes you might want to find a recipient to write a personal message to so to do that you just say find recipient and so we're looking for Harold in the first name and you can write a personal message to him. You can also auto check for errors and it will look so you can choose if you want to see what they all look like and create a new document or complete it and pause as every error occurs and you can uh, fix it as it happens or you can complete the merge and just see all the errors in a new document. Then when you're sure that there's no errors and you've written all your personal messages, you can finish and merge. You can either come back to editing individual documents so it would show you them before it actually prints, or you can go right to print. So if I'm going to merge it to a new document, I can choose to merge them all. And I usually do that if I'm going to look at them first. However, if I'm going to print, if I'm going to merge it right to the printer, I would usually do 1 to 10, and then 11 to 20, and just do 10 at a time. So just in case something uh, doesn't work right and I don't uh, send a huge print um, message and it, it doesn't work out. And you can also choose to uh, look over the emails before you send them. So you can make sure that the two is appropriate. You can change the subject line and you can choose which ones to send as well. That's all for today. Thanks for joining us and see you next time.